All right, doing a short deck tech on my uh, Jeskai Blood Moon Control deck. So I think Blood Moon is a great card in the meta game right now. It really just dominates things like Ban Eldrazi and Suicide Zoo, and is just really good against things like Jund and a few other strategies as well. But until this deck, I didn't really find a good Blood Moon deck to play. There was Blue Moon. This is just an example by Paul Rietzel. Um, my issues with Blue Moon: it has weak threats. It has a like hard time, in my opinion, closing out the games. And I don't think counter spells are very well positioned. And I think, especially, my biggest issue is that it has a very weak sideboard. I think Blue and Red don't really have good sideboard options for uh, a variety of strategies. For example, this has almost zero dredge hate, right? Then, then I started looking into the sweet concept of Jun Moon. I thought this was really cool. Um, I haven't tried this deck, admittedly, but I think that uh, it might be perhaps a little bit higher variance than I might like. Because even though it has four swamps, it it uh, I could just based on playing this other three color deck. Blood Moon deck, I could see getting Black Black be an actual problem. And um, in, in tandem with the Forest, too, right? Also, uh, Jund isn't really my style of deck. So then a little pet deck I've been working on for a while has been a Red White Boom Bust. And while this deck's like kind of fun and, and not even like that bad, it's very high variance and I, don't, I still don't think the metagame's like quite uh, good enough for it yet. And it has really stinky options like Molten Rain is like pretty bad card. Walla Omens is a, a necessity, but I don't like it. So, but I've been drawn to this strategy because uh, Dark Dwellers and Nahiri are really powerful. So this is where I end up with uh, uh, Jeskai Moon. So it takes the Curve and the uh, Removal Suite of Blue Moon. It's what I modeled the Curve off of. It takes the concept of Jun Moon and that you could play a three color Blood Moon deck. And then it takes the um, for that third color, it takes the power options, which I do have experience with in Dark Dwellers and Nahiri, and just kind of throws it all together. So as you can see, it plays a lot of standard Blue Moon choices. So we'll talk about more of the um, fringe choices. So there's two Flame Slash. Uh, blue Red decks have always looked for one or two uh, extra one mana interactive spells, usually Burst Lightning or Forked Bolt. I think Flame Slash is great right now. It hits Thought Not Seer and uh, Powered Up Grim Flayers, sometimes Snag a Goyf. So I think the card's really solid right now. And of course, I can't play Path to Exile because of Blood Moon. So the other choices were uh, Declaration in Stone to fill the you could think of these as being four Path to Exile slots in a traditional control deck. So the other half of that is Deck and Stone. These were originally my favorite card, Chain to the Rocks, but that wasn't um, so great. No way, the card, Chain to the Rocks, was fine, but it uh, Declaration in Stone is really good against Dredge. So this is... Uh, just like it nabs any creature and it's and it uh, incidentally hates dredge out you know they have three amalgams and you deck in stone you're much more likely to win so the other options are the other weird ones are one timely reinforcements one electrolyze and then two anger the gods uh, I mean the the Jeskai control decks in general always had room for three to four like three mana interactive spells i don't think anger the gods is that good right now but one is great against dredge which is a big deal and two you you need it 
uh, even if you ignore Dredge, like there are just some matchups that you, you're digging for Anger of the Gods the whole game. And it, I mean, it's just good in uh, catching back up against certain starts, like even against Infect, if they're they have these weird like three creature uh, hands, is good at, uh, about swiping those up. I don't think Electrolyze is that great right now, but I definitely don't want it to be the third Anger. And you know, at worst, it's uh, it always cycles. So while it hasn't impressed me, it hasn't exactly disappointed me either. And I really like one Electrolyze because you could combine it with a Lightning Bolt to kill a big creature like a Tarmogoyf and not lose, uh, not be down on cards. The one of Timely is um, interesting. I got it from an idea. Just some Moto player who played Jeskai Nahiri when the deck just uh, came out was playing it as a one of, and it just seemed. Uh, it was just a solid, like, one of to play. I think Jerry Thompson, I don't know if he played it, but I think he, he at least wrote about it. And so it's the same concept here. It, it really lets you win matchups game one that you shouldn't, and it pulls you out of games that you really shouldn't, especially when you start flashing it back. Uh, two mana leak is, like, kind of interesting. Like, these are my only counter spells in the whole 75. While I don't like counter spells, Mana Leak is pretty sweet as a tempo play, and there are some decks that like just have cards that you can't deal with otherwise, especially pre-board. So I like having that somewhat of a catch-all, and it's also very important against Tron and Scapeshift, who who actually have uh, ways to fight through Blood Moon. Especially Tron game one, they could just get Tron before you get Blood Moon, and um, and then post board, you'll really need uh, interaction to slow them down or to fight their naturalized effects. Then why three ancestral visions instead of four? Uh, felt they four. I was drawing multiples too much, and while we can discard them to Nahiri, um, you know sometimes you just might not have the Nahiri, and then I mean it's really easy to to, to imagine a hand where you have an extra ancestral visions that you don't need, and then a Nahiri, and then a land, like, it's just, so those are three cards that aren't really doing anything and affecting the board state. Uh, so it's just, I needed more removal, and it was the card to cut, I found. So onto the lands, you know, how do you make these lands work? I really copied the mana base from the Jun Moon deck, so the concept right here is that I play 12 fetch lands, the full 12 in the Jeskai uh, shard. Then I play one of each shock. Now, this is kind of weird. Normally these Jeskai decks play one steam vent, uh, two steam vents, but again, with Blood Moon out, all these become mountains and I felt I really didn't need the extra steam vents. Then I play two planes, two islands, two mountains. So I like the second planes is a little weird and unconventional, but I really just wanted, I felt I needed just one more planes to, uh, or plane source, but I'm not going to play an evolving wilds. Although I was considering it. I just felt I needed one more, uh, card that is a planes or to get a planes and I feel an actual planes is the best slot and this was because I, as I was tuning the deck I was at first it was only Nahiri as the white card so like I could win a lot of games without a single planes but then I added two deck one timely two helix and then most of the sideboard as you can see is white so I felt it was uh, more important than I thought initially to have white out under a blood moon so i just added a second planes and since then i've been very happy with it now two islands seem low especially with these blue moon decks playing you know seven islands up to sometimes now those decks are trying to cast crypt and command under a blood moon we're not trying to do that we're trying to we realistically only have one double blue card right 
which is Snapcaster, and it's only double blue if we're specifically trying to snap Serum Visions or snap Mana Leak. However, that's not really, um, that doesn't come up often. Snap Mana Leak under Blood Moon is like such a rare occurrence because typically they'll, they'll be able to have the three mana as the game goes on to pay. And then Snap Serum Visions just really isn't a line that the deck takes a lot. Now sometimes I do have a Blood Moon and both players are a little gassed out or they're locked out and I do want to snap Serum Visions and I can't. But I don't think I exactly like lost games before because of that. I think it just extended uh, my victory. So, oh, and the other three cards, uh, three Spire Bluff Canals, that's what the Jun Moon deck is playing. Well, they do the Black Leaf Cliffs. Um, that's basically the, the blue red X black cleaves cliffs now. Spire Bluff Canal has been excellent every time. It lets you play Bolt, Visions, and uh, and both Vision, Ancestral and Serum, and Flame Slash all in turn one, taking zero damage. Very crucial for like burn matchups in any aggressive deck. And it like just curves perfectly into basic planes. So you could go. Bolt your Goblin God, Planes, Helix your uh, Eidolon or whatever, and you f I'm pretty sure you can't lose to Burn if you do that. So onto the sideboard. We have, first let's do like our, our hate pieces, I guess, for Affinity and Dredge, you know, the two decks that need to be hated out. We have two Stony Silence and two Rest in Peace. It seems a little low, especially with Dredge's popularity, but... I think this deck has like a somewhat reasonable uh, dredge matchup because in addition to the two rest in peace, we do have a relic, which is like a hate card. So we you could can say we have three hate pieces. Then game one, and you know obviously post board as well, we have two angers, which are great, and two deck and stone, which in in theory should be like pretty solid at least. So. I consider Anger a hate card, so I, I really say we have five pieces, and then, you know, we have ways to dig for it and scry to it, and we we don't have the worst game one matchup. So, overall, I'm pretty happy with how the matchup is. We got two Stony. It's the same thing. We have a lot of other tools for Affinity, um, it's, and even main deck. We just have a lot of removal. Blue-White-Red has traditionally have had, have had good Affinity uh, matchups. So why are we playing a Relic instead of just three Rest in Peace? Why the split? Relic's a really good card to, you know, bring in against Jund and other Snapcaster decks. But I'm only playing one because it does hurt us if we have to pop it. And it, it's not necessarily a card you want to draw multiples of. So let's do the other options. Celestial Purge is specifically for... Um, Liliana, that's like the main reason, is just great against Jun. Liliana is like kind of a problem for us. So Purge is just a clean answer to that. Um, that's that's uh, not like, I don't like relying on negates or mana leaks for Liliana. Uh, sometimes they could just sneak under it. So I really like Purge for that. And then it's also randomly decent against Dredge as you could uh, exile amalgams and gas although that's not really your game plan one ancestral visions this is like our jund hate for the cyborg um this is actually the best card against jund it, it's a lot better than saying i was even thinking oh what if we just put a bomb like just some crazy two for one like what about chandra the new chandra like oh would that be sick but uh our curve's kind of high and there are situations against jund where, like, they actually kind of just glyph aggro us out. So, Ancestral Vision's a cheap card that's just insane versus them, frankly. Very good against other blue decks as well. And it's just, it, it lets you get under them and over them at the same time. Timely is just our burn hate and pretty good against, you know, zoo decks. I was thinking of Blessed Alliance in this spot, but I really think you could cast a Blessed Alliance or two and still easily lose to Burn or Zoo, which is, uh, you can't exactly say the same for Timely. 
uh, we got wear and tear and engineered explosives. They just kind of uh, occupy the same space and killing a bunch of non-creature permanents that you might have the issues with. EE is a little bit more flexible and better, but we're doing a one-in-one -one split because you could flash this back. And sometimes the two-for-one is actually important. Staticaster is great for X1s. Uh, infect and affinity, the big ones, but it's, it has a lot of applications. Now these three boom busts are very interesting, but uh, you could even read more about it in Paul Rietzel's Blue Moon article. But uh, he has been praising boom bust a lot. And it's just, yeah, it's, you go read him for specific, but it's just really great in the mid-range mirrors. You could use Blood Moon as a lock piece, and but and then sometimes you could just slow them down just enough to be able to um, to be able to establish your lock or land in a Hiri. And with our twelve fetches, it's basically a stone rain. And then of course with Goblin Dark Dwellers, it's insane to flash back. Like that's it in a sense against slow decks is an alternate win condition to be able to. Dark Dweller Armageddon them. And they're just really useful for the uh, Scape Shift and Tron matchups. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments or whatever, and I'll be happy to answer them. Hopefully, this was thorough enough. And thanks for watching.